time, I think. Yeah, for sure, man. You've you've uh, been a wizard. I'm uh, working on it, man. Uh, yeah. So we are live. Uh, what is up, everybody? Howie Spangler here. It's Tales from the Green Room, episode number 118. Holy shit, 118. I got Mike yeah. Pinto here, right? Uh, right here. Yeah, right what's here. going on? What's going on? How you guys doing? Wait, I'm going to do this. Yeah. There you go. I know I got too much shit in my house. Too, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all the pillows are all messed up now. <laughs> what's how, how's it going, man? How you been? Oh man, I've been doing pretty great. Uh recently I'm I'm uh considering everything that's going on. Now finally getting hip to what you and a couple other musicians have told me for years is to get on the web and, and do these live streams and and uh connect with your fans more and i've always kind of been unsure of myself when it comes to anything digital so it took some coaxing and some time but i'm really loving the effects of it and i'm seeing you know how great it is and it's the only way to connect with fans now and and even friends and family so it's been great <clears throat> yeah i use this for more than just the podcast like we have like band meetings and shit you know yeah that's where it's at that's cool because then you probably save that hour of uh, getting everybody filled in before a rehearsal when everybody's just kind of shooting the shit and catching up on what you've been into up to. You just do it here. And then when you go to rehearse, it's, it's time to work. Yeah. I found it's really great. Like a really great alternative to the, uh, to the typical phone call. Cause it's the phone calls are just boring. You know, yeah. it's like, everybody's like, oh, okay yeah okay yeah so we'll do that next wednesday okay so how's the merch how are we looking on merch like just <laughs> dumb shit it, merch yeah it's like I, I we started doing this once the shit went down like yo let's do like a zoom call or something just kind of change it up and so me and the guys are gonna here, get on here and talk the four of us and it's just so much better I, it's nice seeing everybody's faces you know like yeah just you know but it, we're, we don't do shit we stay home you know we're just here unless we have to go to the grocery store you know it's just me or danielle mm -hmm. and uh so we don't see people so <laughs> it's yeah i'm, I'm it's with nice you to, I mean, yeah i see my neighbors i have a, there's a couple down the street that are kind of i didn't even know that we're already in the reggae scene they knew like fortunate youth guys and uh they would help they were helping with some event and it turns out my friend dave like lived right around the corner uh on the same street but oh. uh, so that was cool that's the only people we see and then uh you know saw my folks from a distance on mother's day that's about that's about all i've been doing and uh trying to you know i i'm always moving so i had a lot of organization to do that's what's been great about all this is getting you know your life in order especially getting back into touring and then everything else falls to the wayside you know like just I mean, even going through clothes and organizing emails and realizing like your website's not up to date and your this and that on the business side has to be, you know, brought up to speed. So that's kind of, I mean, we all know you got, when you have time to reflect, that's when you start getting better ideas and, and you realizing the error of your ways, you know, Danielle has been trying to get me to, uh, to do my closet for like two months <laughs> and yeah. like I, I keep coming up with uh with excuses as to why i can't yeah. do it um but you know i just get up and i go man and it's like i don't want to do like I, i'm so thankful that she's like really good at like cleaning and like taking care of the house because i feel like i would just be it would be a, a shit show yeah you know? I, and, lose, uh, I lose my shit sometimes because i'm <laughs> like I should be learning piano. Why am I edging outside? You know, like weed whacking. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta feed the beast, man. It's like, yeah. and all this other shit gets in the way. I know it does. Especially now, like being a homeowner, that's one thing like, but it's, it was kind of cool. The other day I got, we have this like 1980s bathroom in the, and I was all pissed off just for some reason, probably because I couldn't figure out my Apollo twin from the from the live stream. And I just took a hammer to it and started demoing like, God, oh. yeah, So that was yes. kinda, that put on some dropkick Murphys and, and rage and, and uh, just start smashing. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so, yeah, it's been it's been great seeing you uh, 
seen you on, on the lives a lot. Um, I caught you on Instagram the other night and, uh, you know, just, I, I've seen some fa Facebook stuff and, um, are you doing YouTube at all? Yeah, I've been kind of bouncing back and forth. I need to do all three. I like even upgraded the broadband to whatever the best it could be around here. Cause it's not amazing internet in this area. So that took a little while to figure out. I was doing YouTube and doing, um, Instagram because I just saw the effects and, um, me with my name is a, it's a little confusing. I'm sure anybody with a name is sometimes that's why my like Facebook is Michael Pinto because I'll try to go back between Mike Pinto and Michael Pinto. And it's a real pain in the ass having your, your, your name, uh, as your band. Well, you're finally seeing it, but, uh, uh, that people always trying to connect to my personal page instead of my band page. So I need to get my, mike pinto facebook page crack in a little bit more but we're doing that uh you know straight that street team to mike pinto's little district so that's been helpful and uh it's kind of cool to have that because it's like this cool little vip area where we just you know i just send a box of stuff to uh that woman dawn's helping me out a little bit with it because uh she's a pro at it and I just sent her a box of like a, a million CDs and stickers and she's helping just give away stuff during my live streams. It's like a little VIP area. So I'm seeing it at once I did it. And then you obviously see some of the revenue. I'm like, why the hell did I listen to Howie three years ago? Especially, <laughs> you know, when I wasn't touring and still trying to figure out like what, what I wanted to be. Uh, but now it's like, okay. There's people in South Dakota who I have, or Montana, or all over the world, you know? That's, this scene has just, I mean, we've seen it from its infancy. It's just amazing. And I got to thank all the other bands uh, for keeping it going, even for the, I think I was out like two and a half years of touring. I was just staying in SoCal in Arizona, thinking I would get into the uh, songwriting business and then everybody's just been crushing and i'm still connected to them so i'm in debt i'm in debt i gotta you know i got debts to pay so. <clears throat> yeah it's it's nice to uh i always i always tell people like on the podcast and stuff and when i'm when artists ask me questions it's like just be nice you know mm -hmm. um no matter what you do be nice and there's no reason to be a dick because you just never know where other people are going to end up yeah. You know, like you, you know, you end up, you can end up having a connection somewhere that can help you later on. Uh, and if you're not a dick, you know, cause people will remember that they'll remember you being an asshole, you know? Yeah, they sure do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and bad news always travels faster than good, but yeah. you know, I'm not a perfect person. I think, uh, you know, I've made, I am mean, generally very nice person. I, I, I yeah. know that deep in my soul you know as i realized for i had a whiskey period and i might probably have burned a couple bridges that uh i never wish did but uh you know there's a lot of stress that goes into this too i mean i've i've seen you on the road just totally like spent on you on tour especially the older days when you're just like on the road for like 10 weeks just you know night after night after night and you're a high energy you know performer and it's like you know, it's hard to be uh, positive all the time, you know, on when you're on the road all the time. So, yeah, I'm trying to learn, trying to get some wisdom in my days. But, I, you know, I, I like a lot of people. And then everybody's just trying to survive in this game. So, you know, you want to help other people if you can. And other people want, you know, they would like to help you. And you got to realize when you get older that, man, it's just not easy it's not always easy to help out others and and uh you got to help out your band you know what i mean you got to help your your circle first and make sure everybody's happy with that and you know i used to think oh man i wish you know we're friends it's like i wish i went on tour with these guys and i just got to realize you know that's not anybody's fault you know what i mean and a lot of times we know it gets into like management and those, that's their other people's jobs and 
you're just supposed to be yourself. You know what I mean? <clears throat> There's a lot of a lot of factors into uh, what can make or break an artist, you know. And sure. uh, you know, ultimately, ultimately, I think it it comes down to you as the artist, me as the artist, um, and you know, life is about how you react and how you respond, mm -hmm. you know, um, and because life's going to be, you know, throwing shit at you all day long. That's, that's and it's just a matter. Eventually you learn how to be Neo and just, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, uh, and then deflect and fucking take it and throw it back. You know, like, uh, it takes time to develop. And, uh, what it's, what I've been trying to learn the last couple of years is like, I'm trying to be a better person. Like I like I'm a good person. Like I know that, you know, but like yeah. I, I have a good heart. Um, but I always have this, uh, this, I know that I've had this kind of controlling sense, mm. you know, like I, I need to be in control. I micromanage everything, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and well, I try to that like, that's great. And that, you know, there's, you know, someone, you know, a band should be a democracy. Um, and then when you have your team, you know, they, they work for you, but everybody, you, there needs to be, it takes a lot to make that well-oiled machine. Uh, someone does need to steer the ship. You know, someone needs to kind of drive, right? Mm -hmm. But then everybody else needs to be there to like, you know, everybody does does their part. Um, and everybody kind of needs to recognize who's doing what, you know. And it's not like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. It's just sort of like everybody just kind of knows their role, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I definitely. And that's with time, though, too. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I mean, I'm so envious of bands like you guys and even you, Iration, you still like pretty much the same members all throughout with yeah. musicians. I mean, that's commendable. And, pro, you know, that's something that with me, I wish I had more just because you're in a team. And I was always into like sports and stuff like that. And I, I like the idea of like we're in this together, us against the world type of thing, because sometimes that's all you have. And uh, so with me, I'm like energy, energy out, out, and then I get burned out, and then I have to like recoup because it is kind of my thing. And uh, maybe that's just I gotta, you know, I'm still finally like uh, getting a handle of where I should be spending my energy. You know what I mean? Sometimes I just wasted energy in certain places that I shouldn't have been. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the bar was a while for, for a while there over in SoCal, but, um, you know, that's, I guess, part of, uh, getting older and, and yeah. figuring this out. But I mean, everybody, uh, so many people have been kind to me, including you. Every time I have a question, you you have a, a great answer and a, a fresh perspective. So I thank you for that. And it's a couple other people that I, you know, connect with, but man, uh, what a scene what a scene this has been just to watch it now you're seeing it get into uh areas of the country that you never thought would have this style of music in you know what i mean it's really cool it's it's funny when you go to you know i remember going to uh nebraska the first oh, couple yeah. times and you see kids dressed like kyle from slightly stupid you know, with the the fucking socks pulled up to their knees and the you know the, the, you know, the dicky shorts and the the flat brim hat pressed down to here, it's just never, never been to a beach and like yeah. you know it's just it's that that Southern Cali kind of look and uh, it was crazy you know they they say one one guy I remember him saying like I've never been to a beach I've never seen a beach wow you know they're landlocked and. Um, like you know, Southwest has like pretty cheap flights. <laughs> yeah, they gotta want to get away. It, yeah, <laughs> um, I'd go by myself. I wouldn't be able to deal with that. Yeah, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, when we used to go to like Lincoln and stuff, and uh, we would um, we had some raging shit. I mean, a long time ago, I remember one of the like r Knickerbockers. That place used to pop off. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Knickerbockers, and then there was a place called Box Awesome, which is like a I think, I think it was an all ages venue or maybe, um, but then, then we moved it to, uh, to Omaha. We started doing the waiting room. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, Nebraska just like they throw down. I mean, we've been to some places where 
just like you said, I never thought, you know, we, we played, we did a Billings, Montana on a Monday night with pepper. Oh, wow. I think Castro as well was with us and it was fucking sold out. It was insane. It was crazy too. Monday night. Yeah. On an irate with iration show. And that was like, that was right when they had released that time bomb EP. And it was like every show sold out in those areas. I'm like, dang, here we go. That was like the beginning. And then uh, it's just been like everywhere there's fans and it's very connected. You know what I mean? It's, it's really cool to be a part of. What I love about the scene is that, and you know, this may, this may be true in other scenes like metal or, or country or whatever, but in our scene, you know, the American reggae scene, and I call it American reggae just because it's just, you know, there's sub genres all, it's like the umbrella, you know, sure, sure. you got reggae rock, you got punk reggae, you got roots, you got dub. Um, anyway, in the American reggae scene, uh, it's really great because you can go to any one of these shows of any of these bands mm -hmm. and you'll see t-shirts and hats of other bands in yeah. the genre. And so you'll go to a Ballyhoo show and you'll see stick figure merch and Pinto merch and Bump and Ugly's merch, you know, and uh, and vice versa. You know, Iration, they've got Ballyhoo shirts in the crowd and, you know, Revolution's got Ballyhoo shirts in the crowd. It's really cool, man. It's like, yeah. They do it's support. so connected. I mean, I couldn't believe even with this, uh, um, with this downtime, like how much merch people have been buying online after doing these live streams. I'm just like blown away. I, I'm like at the post office. That's the only other place I go to is the post office. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> crazy. I'm like friends with the post, and I and I gotta thank the fans. If anybody's watching now, it's like thank you so much. I don't know what i do but i i need to start thinking about merch again and uh you know all these little things on top of uh you know my wife would come i'm like what'd you do today i'm like i mailed stuff that's like it took me like three hours just crazy. <laughs> uh, dude I, I you know i mean that's tedious stuff i'm you know i like to listen do other things musically but there, it takes up uh, a good amount of time and it's so fun to see where it's all going to south dakota and alabama and you're like i think that's when i had that holy shit moment you're just like wow this this internet is so powerful it took me a little too long to realize it but yeah hey uh some fans are saying to turn your mic up oh yeah just go and give it a good crank there let yeah, us know yeah. oh that's yeah that's pretty yeah good. there you go good, good now i'm hearing you oh i can oh i didn't even see these comments oh i, I got even click the live comments there you go. Oh, yeah. So what up? if you got, if you got questions for Mike Pinto, everybody throw them at us. I'll, I'll fly them in later. Oh, okay. Nice. Thanks for the sugar shack. See, sometimes I get all, that's the thing about live streams too, is like, I look at the comments so much. I can't help it. Well, I mean, you, here's, here's, here's what's great about, about this format. You should always be looking at the comments, you know, whether yeah. it's good or bad. Right. And mm -hmm. Come on, it's going to be mostly good, uh, but uh, probably all good, right? Yeah, very yeah. seldom you get like "fuck you, you suck." You know, in the comments. <laughs> Usually, they're telling me that they can't hear me. That's what that's been the, uh, the beginning of my experience. But you know, I'm trying. Yeah, uh, Monica says it's much gooder. Um, so, uh, uh, you need to, like we need to read our audience. We need to know what they want. We need mm -hmm. to give them what they want. And the best way to do that is to fucking read it. It's right in front of you. They're trying to tell us, you know? Sure. And so uh, the other day I'm like, hey guys, what should I do? We're going to do the live stream Thursday. We need a 24 hour uh, exclusive live stream shirt again. What would you like to see? And I, everybody just like, just comments, just all kinds of, there was a lot of pineapples. There was Earl with the, with the Maryland, uh, Maryland mask on, nice. uh, Maryland flag mask on. There's, there's, pirates there's a beach you know so i'm so i kind of narrowed it down to like the themes that sh that came out the most and i'm like okay so i saw a lot i saw a lot of uh earl with a maryland mask on you know type of thing so i started sketching it out and as i was doing it i was like taking pictures showing the progress and like what do you guys think what do you guys think how about this how about this and it got to the end everybody's like fuck yeah take my money you know it's like it's it's 
it's research and development on like a completely bigger scale. Like it's just insane. It's like instantaneous. Yeah. You're direct right into the people who are supporting you in the first place. And that's like priceless, you know, and other companies, they don't have a connection to their, you know, to write to their customers. Like not to say that we're companies, but I mean, we, it is, we a, are though. there is a product. We we're are. a business, you know, they I, know, are but I hate saying it like with music. Yeah. Cause there's, there's other things too is, and I got to, I still have to be careful of it too. Is like, I still want to do what I want to do and not get uh, musically. And I don't want to get influenced by other people too much because then it's, there's something with me that like, that's, you know, it's like, don't tell me how to raise my kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like dude, in that, in that, in that fact, but that's learning too. You look, look that when it comes to the music, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking specifically about merch and things. And I do sometimes like, Hey, sure. what kind of, what kind of record would you guys like to hear? You know? Mm -hmm. And I'll take comments all day. I'll, I'll take suggestions and things like, you know, it's all about what you want to do. You're, your fans are there because they like what you do. You have a sound, right? Mm -hmm. And there's, you're not going to change that obviously. Um, but I like to know like, yo, should I write like a, like a dirty, like uh riffy reggae song, like some sick, you know, single note riffs and like, you know, or should I write like a, like a punk song? Like what, what, you know, things like that. It's everything that's in my wheelhouse. It's everything that we've done. You know, we're not, we're not going to do some off the wall bullshit, you know, Oh, you guys yeah. should fucking be Maroon five now. No, no, we're never going to do that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But it is kind of cool to see where people's heads are at. I like, I like ultimately I'm going to do what I want to do musically and what I, whatever I feel, I'll never, never force anything, but sometimes it's kind of fun to pick, pick their brains and see what their vibe is and what they're feeling. Hey, what'd you guys think about that? Should we do more of that? You know, like, and yeah, I did that for the first time. I did do that. I did ask like, you know, what do you hear when you hear me? Like, like influences and things like that. And, uh, I, which is funny. Cause I got a couple people that I have heard before and like a Jim Croce was somebody that had said, I'm like, I, I didn't think I, had, that that was true, but it makes you think a little bit more about listening to Jim Croce and then kind of absorbing that, seeing what maybe it is about it. By the way, hi, hi people. Hi, Alabama. Uh, Jimmy McKay, just wanted to say quick hellos to some folks. Nick Mungo, I finally got my sound right. I figured it out. <laughs> Nick, Nick was helping me, trying to help me out, man. It's it's tough. I'm uh, even right now. I'm like trying to send files to some people and and record it right on the recording process. And I'm just like, oh. I got so frustrated. I just I spend like two hours on something. Like I couldn't import the file size, the sample size, right? And it kept playing extremely fast. Oh yeah, your sample rate was wrong in the project. What are you using, yeah. Logic? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Logic should give you a prompt that says, "Hey, do you want to change the project or change the file?" I always work in forty-eight, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you have to when the, when you create a brand new project in Logic, it uh, it it defaults to forty-four-one, and so you got to go in and manually change it unless you create a template. And then you always open that template, you know, that's already set to 48. Sure. You know, oh, um, that's what the templates are for, for the, for the file size, sample sizes. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you start figuring out how to use templates, which is very easy, like you, it really cuts down your, your time and increases your workflow. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and that's, dude, that's do, my next kind of, uh, do a session with um, me, man. I'll like, well, I'll just, I'd love to help you out. Yeah. That'd be fun. I mean, we talked about you producing something of mine. It'd be, it'd be definitely great to, be about it i would love to man i would love to you should send me a couple tracks so you you know you're yeah. feeling let's work it out i would love to yeah i'm trying to i'm kind of getting a little bit like i don't know maybe because i live in new jersey now <laughs> it's like started like i want to play like stuff with more balls to it you know what i mean like i just want to get more i'm gonna get a little rowdier again yeah, bring that punk rock kid out, man. Yeah, I mean, even I'm if playing. it's the song's not for me, that's, I mean, that was, this is probably the better way to have it as an outlet for, as a songwriter, is to just, you know, kind of, even through these, like, talk to you, play the song right to you in one of these sessions, and then be like, who do you hear can sing this? And then we just, like, email that guy, and then we go, hey, Mike writes a song, thought of you, 
want to do it cool done like that's that would be my dream because i know there's songs and and styles that i want to write but i can't sing everything you know what i mean i can't you know uh, there's like an irish drinking song that i'm just like get i want someone with a gravelly voice like a you know like authority zero you know like someone like jason to, you know someone with a real can really belt that you know, has this little can have a little gravel in their uh throat to sing that song you know what i mean where i'm trying to uh, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, like i don't have a I don't have that voice either man I, yeah. I can't growl or anything uh, a lot of people it's, wish they had your voice but it's too clean well. yeah sometimes i'm like man i wish i was like should have been a smoker or something <laughs> yeah yeah you know? i do uh, find if i'll smoke some weed then i'm like oh that's closer yeah you know, i like recording uh yeah i mean if you're trying to get in the songwriting game i mean absolutely i would love to help you with that too like um we can we can like tag team it and try to get yeah. through to some people and we can see if any artists want to do it because you write cool songs man thanks man you know? i think yeah. i like the pressure too the thing about with me is like you know it's all my project i i moved here i have kind of like an east coast band and a west coast band and people come and go so it's really all me and i'm just like I want someone to be like, yeah, we need a song, but like we're doing a record. Like I always said I would be a much better musician if I was like in the sixties, early sixties, like in a room smoking cigarettes, like need a song. Like, yeah. I, I'd give, be give me 10 out. minutes. Clorox needs this jingle by <laughs> give me give me 10 minutes. <laughs> I'll write you a song. <laughs> exactly. That would be me. <laughs> I, I I for some reason it's probably the uh slightly neurotic italian in in my soul that needs to uh to have that pressure pressure makes diamonds type of thing but yeah uh, I, I find that uh that i do work pretty well under pressure <clears throat> when there's a clock ticking um and you know it's not without it's freak outs i've been that's another thing i've been trying to really rein it in and work on uh developing um uh, fucking word I can't even think of a word now um help me out people in the comments uh yeah and we see your comments here on facebook and and uh instagram i mean uh, facebook and youtube so if you you know if you're on either one we'll see it um god damn it of course i i you know, talking about like working uh, slowly instead of. Uh... No, there's a there's a there's a word, and it's like, uh, God damn it, when you remain calm when it's under when you're under pressure. What the hell is the word I'm trying to think like of? Level headed. No, uh, yeah, like that. But there's like there's a good word, <clears throat> and it's uh, it's not pride. It's not structure. You, all those things are incorporated, but. Uh, <laughs> damn it <laughs> i'll have to come back to it um yeah but just working on being better at um poise not freaking Ooh, out not poise that's a good word that's a good word though poise is poise is a part of it um uh let's just get away from it it'll come back to you it'll come back um but working on being uh better level-headed under under pressure and um uh not freaking out and yeah keeping your composure that's a good way to put it mm -hmm. uh <laughs> oh my god i can't even, i had this i was talking about this the other day and it's just gone it's funny um, that dave said clairvoyant because i thought of clairvoyance too for some reason it was you gotta be you have to be clairvoyant you have to know what everyone's thinking how he's brain charades let's what's it in that what's in that head <laughs> i i got a pretzel in my head <laughs> i gotta go back in my head movies here and figured out um collected yeah. yeah that's a good way to put it See, i like the i like the uh adrenaline man i can't i can't get away from that and i think that's why when i record i've always had this much money and this much time like always i don't know is not a lot of either when i got into the studio and that was especially in the early days so it was always like that's why i was so great to work with chuck trees who's a legend because he played bass and drums and it was me and him in the studio. It's like, we got only this much time. And it was like, all of a sudden we both got so charged up 
that we got into another level of thinking and, and it was at the time, no matter what that time was the best I felt like I could do, you know what I mean? And with the money and the time and, and you rise to that, uh, level and it's like, Oh, you get that high, just as high as you get when you're on stage. And so God, now that I think of it, you know, I used to associate that with the studio. So coming to your own home studio and you're sitting here and you're like, well, if I don't do it today, I can always do it tomorrow. Uh, it's probably a negative, something I got to work on. There's a getting, uh, getting focused, you know, there's definitely there's I can see like going to some place like Sonic Ranch where we did the girls album. Mm -hmm. We had two I weeks. We had 15, that, what's that? I was actually going to ask you about Paul Leary and all that. Experience. Oh, yeah, we can totally go into that. Um, but we had 15 days to make a record and I had about half the record written. And <laughs> right. And, you know, of course, you're spending all this money to go uh -huh. there. And it's just. There's something about I lost my mind a few times, you know, in that yeah. 15 days. And the band's looking at you wide eyed like. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> you know what do we do now what do we do now and like the good thing about that is that when you block out time like that you have time you can freak out and leave for four hours mm -hmm. whereas when you're you know just starting out and you don't have a budget you're literally like scraping money together and figuring out you know the three hours you can be at the studio you know once a month mm -hmm. uh you know it's you have to use the time you have to be productive but when you do something like that and it's like 15 days to do you know let's say 12 songs and you know maybe half the record is written there's a little bit of you have some time there to just like all right i gotta step away for a little bit you know um when i'm doing it here because we do everything here now mm. like we record drums at donald's house in his basement and then oh, i'll bring no everything way. back here Damn, yeah. everybody kind of does shit at home and i just That's awesome we use dropbox dude dropbox they should pay me because i talk about them all the time uh i i pay for that pro account i think it's 10 bucks a month yeah dude it is like the best you get like two terabytes i think and like uh i think and we just it, everything's organized and everything and whenever if you're sharing a folder with somebody like if they put if like scott puts key keyboard parts up there i'll see it immediately and i'll just pull it in shit like that whatever edits i make they see it it's it's wonderful um, yeah i feel like i was on the first tour when scott busted out the keys he's like i gotta do i gotta be doing more man and uh <laughs> we and started I, we, he started putting know, the pressure on him and and uh now he's just like killing it it's so cool to see it it, it uh oh yeah chuck trees did a lot of work for the movement yeah he did he did set sail sorry i got totally distracted See, that's what I got. That's what I got to work on. Um, <laughs> Squirrel. Yeah, a little ADD. Um, yeah, it's cool because I want to learn to play keys. I've always been like, you get that. I always get that feeling going past the piano when I was a kid, like hair standing up, like maybe I should be doing this, but I'm still only a couple of years in and not ready to do it live yet. But uh, just to go to Chuck Trees, yeah, he did set. He did that uh, set sale record in philly and g love studio with with the movement which they didn't have a drummer he played drums and bass on that too i mean chuck trees is it, it's one of those things that uh, he's a philly legend he worked with g love on his records when it was not when he just did uh, like lemonade like g love and not special sauce that's all chuck chuck was in bad brains chuck was in uh he toured with like rage against the machine and uh Pearl Jam, he was in this band Underdog in those days. He had McRad, Skate Punk. Chuck Trees, I he needs his due, man. It's like, how do we get that guy uh either a trophy or a <laughs> he I need to get I need to get a studio just so Chuck can come and hang out in. Just be like, hey Chuck, there's a room over here for you. Yeah. Probably would have like four more records. Yeah, I've seen his name a lot over the years as yeah. a player pro skateboarder he was a pro skateboarder too wow so pretty legendary guy how does sure. one man possess so much talent he plays drums guitar and bass and yeah i mean all like pro level so you're like damn i mean he even did some second like i'd 
we did some uh, record up in the Poconos at um, Sal Mine Studio, and he would even do like little pickings. Like he would wake up so early. He had his M box with him. We were doing 15 hour days. And then when I wake up, he's on his M box doing another project. I'm just like, I need that. That's why, like, when I talk to you, you, it's like you and him. When I talk to you, I leave like fired up. Like, okay, get your shit together. <laughs> so I guess yeah, I got to talk to you more. It's uh, when you have, um, when you have the tools at your disposal. And, you know, it's something that for me personally, like I've always dreamed of having a way to record myself and little toys and things. And when I have it, you know, and then I have a mobile rig as well that I take mm -hmm. with me on the road. That's what everybody so, knows. Yeah. So I'll, I'm always able to like, if I have an idea, I can whip out the, the mobile studio or whatever. Or if I'm sitting here, you know, I'm here <clears throat> pretty much every day, all day into the night. And, wow. God bless it. Yeah. And so... Uh, I try to take off on the weekends, you know, for the family and all that. Uh, mm. I kind of, I kind of treat it like, uh, treat it like a, like it's a job that I'm, I'm leaving for a while. Like I, today I told my daughter, you know, she's, she's like, dad, can you cuddle with me on the couch? And I'm like, <sighs> like, you know, I, of course I want to do that. Yeah, sure. But, uh, I'm like, baby, I gotta go to work, you know, and I got my coffee and I just come, come you know, I'm, I'm 10 feet away from him. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's got to be difficult. I, I have a tough time with that with, you know, I have my dog even here and uh, yeah, he's being really good now, uh, but he, he'll get Hawaiian and you're just like, dude, all right. Then you're walking somebody. I mean, do you do, do you do like hours blocks? Like, are you like, okay, I'm only doing social stuff from this time to this time. And then I, because that's what happens with me is I'll get in the studio and I'll mess around. And then I'm like, oh, there's some notification of an email. And then I'm like on Facebook and then trying to respond to somebody, something. And uh, just to be on top of that. And I get lost. I get lost in the sauce. And you're trying to do both. And uh, my balance is, is not what I would like it to be. That's for sure. <clears throat> trying to find a work-life balance that's healthy or uh, a workflow when you're working, um, a workflow that makes sense. I try to have structure, um, but a lot of times, you know, even, you know, as long as I've been doing it, it still gets out of hand because if I'm waiting on something, if I'm waiting on an email, like for instance, I am, uh, before we, before we were on this, on this call, we, uh, I was working on, I'm, possibly transitioning to a uh, final cut pro from adobe premiere so i'm trying to learn it and mm. jump in and the next quarantine video i've started kind of editing and messing around oh. and uh so i was on you youtube edit your own videos on final cut uh yeah yeah oh I've, I've been using premiere but uh all that stuff i just yeah i like i like doing it all man i like making shit so yeah you do yeah so I it's mean, fun you know, it's fun for me and so like i was doing that um, and then we had this call. I'm waiting on uh, mocks from our merch company so I can update, create the landing page for the website to send people to for the live stream on Thursday. We're two days away. Uh, mm -hmm. So so I'll be doing something and then I'll get that email like, oh, fuck, I got to take care of this right now. I got to start. So I'll be in the middle of doing like a session, you know, working on a song or maybe, you know, whatever. And then I'll get that email later today. And I, okay, got to switch. I got to go into website mode now. I got to make this website. Um, once I do that, I'm going to have to craft an email with MailChimp and send that out to everybody. Let them know, hey, Thursday night, here we go. 24-hour shirt. This other merch will be available. Day of stream, stuff like that. I'll have to do all that and get that done. And then I can come back to whatever I was doing. I got, I'm still practicing for the stream on Thursday because we're, we're doing a lot of songs we never really ever play. Oh it's yeah, deep cuts. It up, you know? So I have so much anxiety about that. Every time we do a live stream, I have anxiety all week. I can, I can imagine. I get it pretty hard the day of, just because you're like me, because I'm so intimidated by the uh, the internet and the uh, just the digital part of it and getting everything to sound good. And I've had mistakes before, so you know, you just you got to have those freakouts. And I'm trying to even get back into, you got to exercise, man. You got to get that out. I'm trying to like 
do that too. Get back into that. I, f- I could deal with the stress much better. Yeah, uh, working out helps for sure because you get you get in a better mindset, you know. Yeah. And we haven't worked out in probably two weeks, you know. And we did, I think, six days or maybe seven days in a row of hitting oh, wow. that uh, that Chris Hemsworth's uh, center app. And oh, every wow. night when the kids go to bed, we do a workout, and it kicked my ass. Um, and I've got like the dumbbells sitting there next to the TV now and like all this stuff. And we have, we have the yoga mat and we're just doing all this core and like all this, all this shit. Um, yeah. You gotta, I mean, you gotta change like with, with these times mm-hmm. uh, with the way are they are now. It's like, and it's probably better. You're probably saving money than rather than go, getting a gym membership. Cause I had a gym membership. I mean, even me with my moving, it's like, dude, when you move to a new place, you have a whole different schedule too. And you have to like rein that in because where I used to go work out places and I, I had a lot of places I liked, but then sometimes you don't like it. You're just like, damn, I gotta, you know, uh, it takes me a while to get a, um, set disciplined schedule. But once I get it, that's when all my creativity comes. And so I, it's interesting. Like, when do you wake up? Like, when do you start? Man, the the quarantine really fucked up my schedule. Like yeah. I, we were getting up, you know, seven seven thirty, mm-hmm. and uh, two days in a row. This was like a year and a half ago. I woke up at I think five or five thirty in the morning, mm-hmm. and it was wonderful. Got my coffee. It was dark yeah. outside. Everyone's asleep. I came down here and started editing a video or something. Um, but lately, it's just been madness. I you know I'm getting up at nine i think i woke up at 10 the other day it's just it sucks but my problem is i'm getting to this loop where i'm staying up too late you know i've been up till two three in the morning and a lot of it is i'll work down here you know till like midnight and then i have to unwind i can't just go to bed after doing this all day so i want to like watch a youtube video or watch an episode of something or play a video game or something to chill out and then I find myself and I'm watching tutorials about Final Cut last few days uh, <laughs> till three in the morning. And it's like, I got to stop that because you, you're not, you know, if you stay up till three in the morning, you're not going to wake up. It's five, six o'clock, you know? No way. Yeah. I used to think that the late because I'm I'm always been kind of a late night person. I always thought it'd be more productive at night, but I don't know if I believe that anymore. <laughs> I think you're just either productive or you're not. And you have to get your schedule to wherever things are working and, and roll with that. I always would be like, Oh yeah, I'm going to set up the studio and my wife's going to go to bed. Cause she goes to bed early. Cause she works. She gets up at six every morning and I'm going to be able to go. I'm going to be able to work from nine to two and then wake up. And it doesn't matter if I wake up at 10 because I got all this work done, but that's not the case. Cause it's like, Oh, uh, all right. I am a little tired. You're going to lay down. All right. Now I'm going to lay down. It's infectious. Yeah, it is. When you're with your partner and then with it's your like, partner. Yeah. So it's like now I find myself if I, um, I work more late morning, like creatively in the last, since the quarantine than at night, um, which I always thought, you know, I, I always thought that, Oh, well, this is who I am. You know, <laughs> like, like that person doesn't change or anything. Now you can certainly adapt. I mean, I, I consider myself, I'm definitely a PMer. Like I'm a night person. Mm-hmm. And you know, when, especially being on tour, you're a night person, yeah. you know, yeah. especially but, when, you, even when you come home, you're definitely up late. Yeah. And, <clears throat> but the reverse is like, I like getting things done early. Like I'd rather get up. I'm usually down here at nine, nine 30 and it's working right away. Yeah. I have my coffee. I, I get halo and Draven their breakfast and I come down here and I start working. Um, uh, when it gets to be nine, ten o'clock at night, I start getting lazy and I'm like, all right, I don't feel like doing shit anymore, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe that's because I've been working since nine o'clock, but it's also it, uh, I used to pick the morning shifts at work back in the day. Yeah. And because I didn't like going in at four o'clock, because even though you can make more money, you know, uh, at serving tables at four o'clock, I preferred working in the morning because I like getting shit done early. So I have my nights available. Got it. Um, and it's probably no different. I just, there's something about waking up, opening the curtains, you know, 
uh, putting the coffee on, listening to my uh, my echo, uh, my news on my echo, you know, unloading the dishwasher. That's my process every morning. And then I come down here and I start working. Yeah. And if I do that late, man, if I wake up at 10 o'clock, dude, I, I hate myself. You know, if I yeah. wake up at 930, I hate myself. You know, yeah. it's like, so I'm trying to get better at not staying up so late and waking up early. I want to do that. Yeah, me too. I got up really early today. I was like, probably I got, I was about six thirty seven, and you can, you can mess around too. And then you, then it's 11, you know what I mean? Like you can mess around doing a couple of things like, you know, learning, like you're talking about learning a tutorial or, uh, I could just like play around and when you wake up late and you fuck around, then it's like three and you're like, God damn, the day is over. Um, and I got, forgot I got to run errands or, you know, the, yeah. that rushing around. I never lived on other people's schedules for so long, especially with touring that I felt like, well, that's just the way it is. But now that you get older, you're like, okay, you know, you're, you're, Time is more valuable the older you get. We know that. Yeah, we got shit to do. <laughs> and then, you know, we've got <laughs> family time. <clears throat> what up, Greg Shields? You're in bed? I know, usually I am. Oh, and Russ. What up, Russ? How you doing, bud? Got some Russ people bomb. here. Oh, Russ Poff and Russ Bomb. <clears throat> Damn. Oh, uh, Magellan says we should uh, do the Ocean 98 page again. Yeah, let's definitely do that. Yeah, no doubt. No Brandon, problem. hit me up. Let's I think the out. one time, I think the one time there was no DJ when I did it. <laughs> something was. Oh really? <laughs> something was amiss. Yeah, a DJ didn't show up or something. Oh wow. Yeah, so I'm like, uh, I just did it on their page, and I had my friend, uh, Fun Boy, you know, uh, John Forte. He he did a show. He did a show on his ranch one, on a farm once. Johnson's farm. I know you've played a million shows there in that area. Oh, I remember this. Surfer dude, yeah. Yeah, this is out like Eastern Shore or Ocean City-ish area or something Yeah, he's like that. Fenwick. Yeah, he's like from Fenwick. Yeah. And uh, really Yeah, we did that him. once. Yeah, his family. Yeah, he don't, he's only done it like a couple times. It's not like a usual thing. But um, he was just trying to do something different. Oh, Todd, Todd Elrod. What Look up, Todd. Todd? Todd played drums with me for about... Five, six years. Thanks. Todd is a great drummer. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to, you ever have a question? That guy knows all the gear too. Especially with drums. Man. I'm sure he I'm sure he and your brother had some talks about gear all day. I'm sure. <laughs> we yeah. had some good times. So I remember uh <clears throat> we did the uh the summer sound system tour together in mm -hmm. like twenty what, two thousand nine? Yeah. Was that with the B uh, Foundation? Oh. Yeah, I think that was 08 when I was acoustic. Okay. Did, did we do, was it you and us and the B Foundation? It was, me acoustic. It was me acoustic. Oh, my God. The B and you. Yeah. And then the, the B Foundation picked me up from Raleigh. And I go in and Jason and Ian are in their underwear. I never <laughs> met them before. I go to go in the van and Jason's like, you know, big guy, played football. Yeah, uh, like semi-pro football, and this dude's in like tidy whities and shit. And I'm like, I'm like probably half his weight at that time, oh, man. and uh, it was funny. And so I was just like, "What the hell am I getting myself into?" Those guys were so fun to tour with. That was a really good tour um, that we all did together. That was a really good, you know, good. It's such a blur, and I remember waking up so many times. Like Jason and I would be the first to. Re retreat to some dark room somewhere at a house you know because we'd always stay at someone's house back then mm -hmm. and it was uh you know we'd try to find the best room the best room we could um uh, to get some sleep and so many times waking up next to you know uh a, a cat litter box or you know <laughs> something you know just awful situation someone's dirty laundry dirty laundry you know uh yeah th yeah because so when you're young people. too and you know especially you're like 20 i think we were like 25 26 at that time it's like everybody's house that you're going to is probably a lot of times is is really young you know what i mean like when you get older and you say okay let's go to some house, it's usually like oh cool you're like got a you got a house house with like eight bedrooms sweet 
we'll go there because we don't we've already gone through the the worst and there's no worse feeling than leading a band to a bad location oh yeah and and they're like yeah we got three beds for three you know we have to rock the three piece and you get there and it's like a lazy boy and a uh used mattress you're like oh my god these guys are gonna kill me they're all like, <laughs> I'm sleeping in the van. <laughs> yeah. There was a couple nights where you're like, you know, what? I'm just going to sleep in the van. Yeah. 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 Um, we stopped doing that in t- t- 2013, I think. Yeah. I'm like, the okay. Van. I remember when I lived in Eugene, I was like, I got this big house. You're like, dude, we, we, we go to hotels. Like I, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> just, you get to, you get to it. It's like, it's age. It's like pride. It's, yeah. it's a lot of yeah. things ego yeah. a little bit yeah that's why i built that bus because i'm like cool i'm in a little bus now that's and, right uh, you did build a bus it's not that little it's it's, it's a shuttle bus it's it's pretty nice it's what was, uh, what was the process help. the process what How'd was you it? Build it oh from i had to gut the whole thing it was like a new york giants party bus and um luckily i had a lot of help Thank God I had like three or four guys help a couple. Uh, Joe from bang box was a real big help. Um, he helped me. He supplied me with some of the wood for the uh, ceiling, which was all pine. So it smells really nice. I think we, that was one of the first things we did, but we had to pull out the old AC that they had in there. And um, I threw in the beginning. We, I mean, I bought it for the long beach dub all-stars tour. And they were all telling me that they had, um, they're all on a tour bus. And I'm like, oh man, I'm going to be chasing a tour bus in a van. And uh, I, which turned out to be wrong. They were all rocking like nice sprinters. And I was like, fuck, I could have just cut the van. (laughs) (laughs) Instead of like, I was like possessed. Talk about YouTubing every day on how to build a mini bus and, um, what to do. So I had, I was trading, I had traded a couple shows, uh, with my buddy Sam at East rock roots. And he, he came in and helped me build the bunks cause he knew how to build bunks. We did, I wanted to do three bunks, but it was just too small for that. So we ended up doing the two bunks and then we have, uh, two, we had two benches that, they lift up and then they also pull out and you could put um, pegs under them. And when you're seated, that's good. But you know, that ended up being a little bit uh, janky just because it is wood. And when you're driving, you know, you have six men in our crew, five guys, and then like a TM merch guy. And uh, you know, that's not comfortable to right. uh, for mm-hmm. them while we move. So I'm, I, I turned that into, I got like a nicer, like a fold couch that folds into a, a bed. Not, not like a, um, not like a futon, but it's an actual, just all mattress that comes down and, and it's locked in. But, uh, so that worked out better. I'm trying to still do that on the other side with something a little nicer. Then, um, I had my friend, a, a fan became good friends with me that this guy, Greg Fletcher put all electric in it plugs everything that are hooked up into a generator so the only thing with me uh was it was last summer was the hottest summer to tour remember uh, it was like 100 degrees from july through august so the generator uh started shorting out until i put a visor i finally got a visor that oh. deflected off the uh yeah, that's you I've got a uh, Cummins Onan generator, which I still have to uh, install, but I up to like right now, you couldn't really do it because nothing was open. Yeah. Um, so that's all going to run off separate gas because the thing was, I didn't want to run this AC unit off of the engine because I didn't want it to, you know, take the life out of the engine, you know, especially when you start getting to hot places and summer tours. Like I didn't want AC running off heavy off of a unit in the back that was going to ruin your engine. Right. All new tires. Um, what else was, I mean, I was so lucky because it was fleet serviced because it was owned by some like gravel company. 
So when I took it to the mechanic for the first time, I'm like, dude, they're going to come back at me. We're like, all right, you need, I got it for two G's, dude. Wow. <laughs> That's why I figured I couldn't pass it up. Yeah. I mean, it was a deal of a lifetime. And, I, and I'm going, no, I'm going to have to dump five G's into this before I even get it, even think about remodeling it. And I took it to uh, a really well-known mechanic around here. And he's like, gave it an oil change. You're good to go. I'm like, what? So, uh, I mean, I, I ripped everything out of it myself, put in new flooring. So it smells like nice pine in there and it's, it's been great for the meet and greets. Um, and me, I knew getting back into touring, I knew I was going to be doing first to threes and small runs. We were headlining, you know, just cause everybody's going, well, we don't know what your numbers are going to be like coming out of. You know, which is something I did not foresee, you know, uh, but that's life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I needed to be back here for my family, too. There's a lot of other stuff that it's like I have no regrets uh, in the big picture, but I wish I would have done at least like two major tours that just kept going instead of staying like in a regional thing. Anyway. Bus came out great, and being on that Long Beach Dub All Star tour, aside from the heat, it was, um, it was tricky with the uh, generator for a little while. It was a really good look, you know, better than just being in my white van again. Yeah, and I would have lost my ass uh, going through hotels every night. It just it would have been bad. Yeah, it is, it's a bit of a gas guzzler, but how are the <clears throat> how are the shows? Shows were great; they were solid. Um, I I'm guessing Long Beach is awesome. Yeah, they're great. I mean, they, Ra, you know, Ross MG, Marshall Goodman on the drums. I mean, you can't beat that guy on the drums in he's this great. genre. I mean, he's pretty much the man who created this genre with on the drums you know he did 40 ounces of freedom him and bud are like equally uh distinct in their own sounds and mm -hmm. you know it's just everything i grew up listening to and opie can really sing i mean dude can really sing he can he's good, yeah he's got a good voice i like yeah. when i i mean i hadn't seen him live because he was too you know from the east coast so i was like damn man this guy can sing and then they have uh, Devin from uh, who was in Expanders, and uh, he's fantastic guitar player and sings great backups. You got Roger Revis, uh, Ed Fletcher on um, Ed on the uh, last not, I don't think his last name is Fletcher on Ed Camp. That's it on bass. And they had this dude Brad on sax who was a young cat, like twenty four, just crushing. Uh, so that was great. Agrilites, great tour. I wish, um, we had a camera crew or, you know, someone kind of do with you, you guys and bump and do those. Uh, I think it would have, I think, when, yeah, I think it would have made for like, I think it, everyone got excited because the shows were so good and full of energy all straight through the show. And I, I you know, I, I did bring the horns. I wanted to make sure I brought the horns. And uh, I was like, dude, we needed the video, like half of this run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the uh, <clears throat> forgetting, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of bands can't like even our band, we can't really bring a, a videographer on the road with us. Um, you know, the space and all that. We've got mm -hmm. seven already. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a lot. And uh, I want to grow the band. Like I want to add a guitar player and a horn section. <laughs> I want to, you know, eventually be get the band bigger. But uh, so what I did was, um, I think two summers ago, I uh, put I put the word out, you know, on, on the socials on Instagram. I was like, "Yo, we're looking for videographers all around the country. Send me a reel." And I would I would send them a link to like a Sugar Shack video because Eddie and those guys are great. Yeah, the whole crew. That's they, like the standard. Yeah, that's the standard. And so I would send uh, videos or old recaps by those guys to these, you know, as like the template. I'm like, look, this is what I want it to look like. Um, mm -hmm. Can you do this? Send me a reel. Because, you know, some people will show up 
with a phone. And I'm like, no, nah, man, and like, I'll make sure like <laughs> bring your DSLR. I want to see your reel, you know? Um, but cause I want it to be quality in, at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, a lot of these people were just getting started, but they had good stuff. I found some good videographers that were good at what they do. They were just looking for exposure, you know, and putting their name on something. So went all around the country, made a spreadsheet, had this whole spreadsheet with their Instagram handles. So I know how to get a hold of them again. Mm -hmm. And it's all there so I can go back to it. And I got to update it because a few didn't work out, you know. Um, but you, so that's how you do it. You set it up locally. And then sometimes if, if the shows are close enough, they can come to a couple of shows. So yeah. you've got a region set up. Um, and uh, some nights you don't have it. But most nights we had video footage for recap. Um, then other times, like <laughs> uh, Greg and the Cast Out guys, they'll bring like Chance or Justin with them in their van and we'll just, we'll, we'll pay them, you know, to, uh, yeah. you know, extra to come do it for us as well, you know? And uh, I feel like a lot of young videographers are, are trying to get that, uh, build their reel or whatever, you know what I mean? So we actually did it for that. Uh, I was able to get a great, um, videographer in for this, uh, Cali roots this weekend. So, uh, aren't you hosting that? Are you, you're doing, doing some kind of something? And they asked me to perform. Um, oh, oh. Kelly roots. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just gonna, yeah. Did some video stuff for that. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought you were like hosting something. <laughs> All right. Next up. <laughs> hiring. <laughs> Give it up. Uh, I must Kelly have, roots. Must have misread that. That we're back. I didn't know you. I was like, Oh, he's trying to be a VJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just kidding. Fucking Carson Daly just Dan Cortez, baby. Dan Cortez. <laughs> the one in, whatever happened to Dan Cortez? He didn't parlay I don't on know. TV with anything. Yeah, I don't know. Um probably cocaine, a lot of cocaine. It probably it was all the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh who's got questions for Mike Pinto? Let's let's fly him up here. We're in our second hour, so I wanna uh I don't want to keep them too long, but I'd like to get some some cool questions. Some send some good questions, not some. Where'd you come up with your band name, Mike Pinto? Nothing like yeah, that, right. okay? Yeah, I didn't even come up with that. <laughs> yeah, my mom did. My mom made it. Oh, actually, can I let my dog out because he's gonna he's got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, let. Let's I wait let, one second. Think Mike's of your question let, for one minute. Yeah, send him some <laughs> questions. I'll phone. Well, I'll corral him. He's gonna take his dog out. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know if this has ever been done on your podcast. But this is a first. It's either that or you're going to have the first dog take a shit on your podcast. We don't want that. I mean, I kind of want that, but, you know, I, we're, we're <laughs> I animal run, lovers. Run, we're run. animal lovers over here at Tales from the Green Room Podcast. <laughs> <clears throat> now it feels like that scene in uh, Wayne's World when Wayne takes off right before they start the show because he gets pissed off. And it's just him on the couch. And it's just, you know, it's just like, uh... he's like, you ever seen the, that scene in scanner with scanners when the heads dude, that dude's head blew up. That's what it feels like right now. Like I need to come up with stuff to talk about. Greg, you did host dry diggings. <laughs> the most awkward thing you ever do. Dude, you, Greg Shields gave us the best intro of the day. I think at, at, uh, at dry diggings last summer. Oh, he uh, did. I think that he he mentioned something about the height requirement to be in the band, something like that. <laughs> that was great. Um, oh man, yeah, my buddy, uh, who did it? My buddy Steve from down in Charleston. I think he was hosting one of the Cali Roots. I don't know. I can't. I. I mean, I only got that much charisma. It's not that easy. It's a, it's Me neither, a very, man. It's a very special uh, thing. I barely have yeah. enough charisma for this show. <laughs> it's hard man it's hard to be interesting you know, just, try to be your, just try to be yourself felix would like to know when are you when are you and the band going to put out another record yeah tell us oh, that's a good what's one. going on well it's funny because it's like i have band members kind of came and went especially some of the horn guys uh one of them's in tribal seats kind of full-time the uh which is uh josh malay and then um at the moment, Eric Hirschhorn is playing with Revolution, has been with them for a long time now, a couple of years. And then Max O'Leary, who played trumpet. Those guys are kind of were kind of my constant, and they are uh he's not really going on the road anymore. So 
and now I'm on the East Coast. So I think I've been trying to change direction and it's it's like all up to me again with a whole new idea of what I want to do. So it might be stripped down a little bit more record. And so I'm going to guess by by next year, the end of it's what? Well, next summer I'll have enough for a record. Awesome. Um, but what I don't, about- I'm still a little lost on where I want to go. You know, there's a, th- th- there's no rules, you know, there's no, yeah. um, for me, a record is, uh, still special. Like an album is still mm-hmm. special, but we now live in that era where, excuse me, where, um, you know, you can do whatever you want that you can put one song out, you can put three songs out, you know, it's like, uh, there's this technique that we've been using, um, and the fans are going to learn more about this as we go. Uh, it's been, it's going to become way more normal to release, uh, s- several singles together mm-hmm. instead of an album. Um, and we're going to be releasing some stuff soon. That is pretty much all the singles up till now, rather than a record. And it's going to be very obvious because the mixes are different. They're, they're recorded at different times, you know, mm. as opposed to having one session and doing a full record and putting it out and having it be seamless. It's still going to have its own cover art. It's going to have its own title, but it's going to be basically listed as a single. And you push the single, you don't even mention the other stuff, right? And what that does is two things more than this, but definitely two things that I really care about is it puts everything in one place, right? So if you've got, if you release, like for us, we released uh, four singles over the last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so on, on the fighter release, when we released the fighter single, it actually included the previous three singles underneath it. I never said Uh. anything about like, Hey guys, get fighter and renegade and dark sunglasses. It's all going to be together. You just say fighters coming out. And oh, okay. when people get the get the release, it's got the new cover art for the new single, but it, it has all those other singles under it. It puts it all in one place because when people are driving in normal situations, when we're not on lockdown, everybody's out driving and doing stuff, but they don't want to be going like, you know, driving and like, okay, there's the new single. Let me go back and listen to the other single or let me find some. I would rather have it all in one place. They can listen through. They're not skipping around and like wrecking their car. Um, but what it also does on the back end, and this is where the fans really come in, the fans are, are helping, uh, by streaming, like by all means, buy the MP3s on iTunes. If you'd like buy the record, buy the release, whatever, <clears throat> but listen and stream over on Spotify and Apple music and whatever your streaming platform is as much as possible. Um, mm-hmm. because that helps the artist more than, you know, so you're generating every time you stream and everybody else streams. And the more you stream at least 30 seconds of the song, it creates this sort of like, like bubbling up and the algorithm goes, Oh, Oh shit. It starts taking notice, starts hitting the algorithm and it goes, Oh wow. This seems like it's popular. Oh, we're going to start pushing it out. What happens is it ends up pushing it out to other people that haven't heard your band yet. Yeah, and that's, I didn't even know that. That's how you get listeners. So, so now also the, the third thing it does which is amazing is it takes those three previous songs and it puts them right back in your uh, top 10 and mm. it, it you're basically getting you're, it, you're getting playthroughs people are listening through rather than just gonna okay there's the single and find something else they just listen to the next thing and it worked so the fighter release was the first time that we tried it i wanted to do it over the past year but never had the opportunity so finally i did it and exactly that happened those three previous songs all went right back into our top 10 because people were listening to them and it mm-hmm. generated some people hadn't even heard those songs. Yeah. Believe it or not. As life have, you know, <clears throat> they just didn't get a chance to check it out. So were you saying that when you released it, like say whatever through distro kid or something, you listed all four, the, the fourth time you did, you did you pull the singles off of distro kid and then list them all four or something like that. So normally, normally I would, we, this was all around the same time that I moved our entire catalog to distro kid. Right. Yeah. So some singles didn't make it back to where mm-hmm. to, like it used to be. If you go to our Spotify page, you'll see there's some singles missing. The singles are still there except for this chick is whack, which I'll go to in a, in a second. Cause a lot of people have been asking, but um, you'll see that there's some like Maryland summer, I believe is not 
listed as a single anymore. It's just on the record. But um, that was be that was only because I moved everything over, and I, after moving like fifteen or seventeen releases, because if you include all the singles and stuff, after doing all that, I was like, I can't do this anymore right now. Like I gotta, you know, so I. And I was like, at that point, I was like, well, it's already listed on the new release, so I'm not going to bother uploading the single again. Um, but what you have to do is, every time you upload a song, every time you put a song up to your distributor, uh, they assign an ISRC code to it. Okay, mm -hmm. and what that is is the it's the DNA of the song. It, it is the ID forever. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you whenever you go to upload that song again, let's say you want to put out a greatest hits album and you take 10 of your great songs that have did well and you want to put them on a new greatest hits release that's coming out next month or whatever you have to go in and grab this is where i say make a spreadsheet of your entire catalog and have your isrcs ready to go so you can just copy and paste so you go and use that same isrc code and you put it in there uh in the new release if you don't what's going to happen is you'll end up creating two versions two releases of that same song and it'll split your numbers you'll lose those numbers and then all of a sudden you'll have like this has a hundred thousand plays this has 10 plays or whatever uh -huh. and then so you want to keep that all together so uh make sure you're using the same isrcs when you upload and all you're doing is you're just taking those songs and just so with distro kid you you say okay uh how many songs you want to put up uh four you know so you put the new single at the top and then the, the two the, the three others uh singles underneath it and you just upload the waveform like usual put in no that way. yeah put in that previous isrc that's it. and and whatever other the song title and all the information and it's all all those songs now are going to assume whatever cover art that you upload it's all going to be new cover art but don't worry about that that's i mean that's from an artist thing it's like ah, it kind of ruins it in the artist mind but none of that matters what matters is getting the music out there and having your fans listen um so oh, it'll keep it'll keep the fourth piece of cover art it'll so it'll keep the brand new cover art whatever cover, cover art sure. you upload there on that release specifically is going to be the cover art for that song so uh when when this thing comes out now and and like i said the whole time you're you're pushing new single by mike pinto coming out june 2nd or whatever you uh you just push the single don't even worry about saying oh you're gonna get all the other tracks people will just see like oh cool and I think I have to verify this, but I think with iTunes, um, if you already have those songs, it may consider it a complete my album. So they may not have to buy it again. But for me, I'll price the iTunes album as low as I can. There's a tier system like you have to pick a certain tier for a certain amount of songs. Like it won't, I don't think it'll let you do like a eight track album for one ninety nine. I don't think it'll let you do it, mm -hmm. but I'll take the lowest possible tier pricing tier that i can knowing that these songs have already been out there i don't care about making money on itunes i care yeah, about the songs getting heard and getting yeah, spun right. Right. and people just having the record so that's counterintuitive um, because like you would think oh well there's only one song so i gotta charge you know i should charge more yeah it's obviously costs a lot of money oh hi danielle tobin <laughs> <laughs> what up how y'all doing and yeah i got a pity chrissy i got a pit bull Rocco, he's very, very uh, needy. Uh, and what up, Derek? I got to say hi, Derek. I'll call you back in a little bit. Uh, yeah. Michelle says, "What what's your biggest challenge when it comes to writing a new song? Uh, to have it not sound like other songs. You know, there's some, so many times where you're like, uh, especially your own songs, you know, trying to grow. And when you get into your fifth, sixth, seventh record and you're just like, Oh, this sounds like this song <laughs> or, you know, of mine that I released and you, you want to have something fresh and something that people want to. So sometimes you get to a point in a song where you're like, say you're done the first verse and you're like, oh man, this kind of sounds like this part two. And sometimes I'll just scrap it or I'll just leave it alone. But, you know, so I think that's for me the the hardest thing is to, to continually in my own mind and heart and soul, try to do something that I feel is uh, as fresh as possible so that people can be like, uh, you know, not get bored. You know, 
<clears throat> yeah, I have. I definitely have songs like "Blaze This Weed." Is we like internally we, we refer to it as "Walk Away 2.0." <laughs> that's um, a good song, though. That "Walk Away" song, man. That's that's the one. Thanks. I don't know. It's funny. Like you don't know that you're writing your biggest song when you're writing it, mm -hmm. and it's just you just don't know. And the songs that you think are gonna pop don't pop, and the other it's the opposite. You know, it's like mm -hmm. it's the weirdest thing. Um, Billy says, "What are your favorite venues to play?" Oh, well now, I mean, belly up. I really loved in San Diego. That was like kind of a little goal to have. And the sound is so good. And it's like a 600 cap venue. So it's like, everybody's there and always just like, everybody's amped to be there. It's never a dull crowd. And then, um, that's so that's, that's like one of my favorites as is like, winston's for it for sentimental reasons you know like starting off in san diego um can't beat janice you can't beat janice landing and that one comes up a lot yeah that how could you not love that one i mean i've only got to play it like three times but it was raging one time i got to play acoustic and it was with the hip abduction invited me which thank you know check them out they're great and uh that was like acoustic shitting my pants in front of like a sold out Janice crowd. So that was, <laughs> maybe it's just memorable by fear. I remember Ted from pacifier is there. He's like, dude, you got balls, man. You got balls. I was like, I, I just want to play a gig. You know, I was like, just finally going out there. I'll play anywhere they asked me to. So, uh, I owe them one. Um, where else? See, I haven't gotten to play as big as venues as Howie. So Howie probably has, cooler spots um i i like the catalyst a lot that those are memorable shows in, in both rooms that's like that whole me always kind of dreaming to go to california um uh, another one of those spots uh oh man yeah there's there's some good venues out there man um, there's so many I, I can't it's it's tough and i can hardly remember the early part of touring it, yeah, I wish I remember. Am I right? Yeah, a lot of drinking, a lot of yeah. Jaeger really. I've I heard some relationships with that. Drink. Jaeger ruins everything, bro. Um, yeah. Dave says, uh, Mike, would you put out an album and then went on tour and then switched to do open mic for a little while? Was that weird? And would you do that again? Um. Well, I mean, the open mic that I hosted, uh, I did one in, in NorCal, I mean, North, North County, San Diego, excuse me. That was really fun. I wish it became more of a thing um, because I want to be a part of my community. So I would do it all day long. I was even thinking that to have like Mondays somewhere, wherever I end up, uh, who knows, finally, you know, till I'm an old man, just having like a night whenever I'm not touring and have friends come from out of town and and be like my little spot to you know get them some extra money on a random night plus you know just be a part of your community because you can meet so many people and for me when i was living out there that like paid my rent just that night for four nights in a row so i didn't have to worry about paying i didn't have to worry about my bills which was crazy on an open mic to think Cause sometimes, you know, the road can get, you know, the bus breaks down or, you know, how he knows he drops like thousands and thousands of dollars on, on hoodies. And, uh, especially in the early days, they don't, they didn't sell, <laughs> you know what I mean? You come home with like, f you know, five grand worth of merch. Cause <clears throat> yeah. it wasn't, you know, maybe the, maybe in the beginning, especially like the design maybe wasn't up to where you wanted it. And, you know, there's, you don't know what you're going to come back with even today in, in these tours. Um, so I would do that all day long just to know I had a place where my friends could come see me on Monday night. That's, that would be my little hangout night. Cause I don't really go out too much anymore. Uh, so that would be my night to see everyone and link up with new musicians in the area and, I, I think I've always wanted that uh, to have a little music community. So, yeah. yeah I, before touring, it was, uh, I was making like 600 bucks a week 
uh, <laughs> just doing open mics, man. And, and like having like regular gigs down in Baltimore, down in the city. I was in Baltimore, you know, four to five times a, a week. And I was very plugged in to like the other artists that were, that were in, in the scene and uh, just really cut my teeth in the bar scene and like learn how to work a crowd and stuff like that mm -hmm. and kind of deal with drunk people and how to perform wasted um you know which is a it's a talent it's an acquired talent um but uh yeah and then you start touring and the money goes away <laughs> like you don't yeah. make as much money it goes into everything you know it goes into your merch it goes into it because yeah you know your recordings you're talking about all that gear all this stuff around me you're just like you know it's uh you got to have that balance so i would have no problem coming back to a steady gig and then just something fun you know when you're <laughs> it has to be a nice place don't get me wrong like you can't be playing in some shithole because you know we go to back to that pride thing it's like right you, you deserve to be playing in a nice spot with nice sound and yeah. go in there make your money and have the, the club be happy have you be happy uh you know and, and make that your hang make that your place your hang there's some places that uh that are like you know like divey that i will <clears throat> trade production value for just the experience like the like the the crowd and um sure that's like a place like yeah, yeah, yeah the state in asbury park it's small it's a little yeah. dive bar but it's got history Brad mm -hmm. Knowles got a signature on the wall back there in the green room. Um, I forgot about that. Like, but the shows are crazy, you know? So I'll definitely take that. Uh, another Billy says, when are we getting a Pinto Howie duet? Ooh. That would be good. Yeah, we I'd should be do down that. For that. Howie's yeah. got a much better voice for me. I have this nasally voice, so I have to, I have to match that with something, you know? Come on, man. We got different styles, man. Yeah. Your 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 shit's dope. You write cool songs. I would love to sing your song. Remember we were talking about earlier songwriting. Yeah, I'll sing, I'll sing some of your songs. We should do a, that, at least a collab to start. Yeah, I would love that. Um, Chrissy says, "Is there a different vibe between uh, playing East Coast shows as opposed to West Coast shows?" Now, like years ago, I would say maybe because people were like, you could smoke weed openly in. <laughs> california like 10 years ago and you couldn't really on the east coast shows but now uh i don't know everybody always tries to say what's the difference between east coast and west coast and i like i think with the genre growing i mean it's different types of people don't get me wrong but i think uh gen generally it's not that different you know, as long as the shows are, are great and well promoted. I mean, our, our shows, I could say that our, Howie and our crowds are similar. You know, we're not like a, uh, um, we're not like Jamaican reggae, you know, cause that's a little more subdued crowd where you might think, uh, they're not as energetic about it, but they're totally feeling it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like some crowds I would, go and open up for a more roots crowd. Like we opened up for black Uhuru and I was like, they hate us <laughs> uh, in some, some of the places, other places would not the case, but then they were just like, they were iry and they were just taking it in. And then that I'd see somebody in the crowd be like, I really like that show. And in back of my mind, I go, I thought you hated it because I go, really? <laughs> you know, like, you know, try not to, uh, show my hand too much but i thought dang you know you, when you're on the stage you see that person you're trying to like come on you get fixated yeah, yeah you you try to win them over you yeah know? it's it's tough tribal seeds crowd we did two yeah. full tours with them and it was like that it was like very tough very hard and it wasn't yeah, that like, they weren't they like us? yeah i would even say with you because know, i see my i'd go see josh um mole play with them and i thought but jo the horns bring a whole other energy to that band yeah um, which is which i'm glad because they they write uh, great songs too but they're a mellow crowd you know what i mean and i'm like dude are they into it and then you, you know you see the merch tables like packed after and and they you know show after show they're they're drawing good crowds so i'm like uh with my crowd i feel like it's the same because they're a high energy group of people so east coast west coast i mean 
the only thing is that's different is the way people dress, I guess, you know, and that's South, North, East and East and West. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't really see the energies there, you know, go to, go to Corpus Christi and play, uh, house, house of rock. rock. And you'd be like, that place is popping more than, you know, just as much as anywhere else you go. Yeah, Texas is raging, man. I yeah, love Texas. Yeah, they love they love that this style of music down there. They man. do. So, uh, Gabriel says, uh, any plans for a backstage music lesson? Have you heard of these? I've heard of them. Um, man, I don't know if I really feel like I'm a, uh, you know, a heady musician, but. I bet you I could probably teach some songwriting type of class or something or just the way I do it. I remember I did it for some young kids in San Diego, which was really cool. This thing called, um, uh, acts, uh, Oh no, arts. It was called arts. A reason to survive is for like some kids who've gotten in trouble, uh, in low income areas. Actually Dayla from stupid got me in that, um, for a while. I wish I did it more, but then I got to touring too much and I couldn't, to the responsibility um where you're teaching kids like oh internal rhyme and and this is the way that i write songs uh melody i'd be into it but i i taught a guitar lesson recently it's a little hard with the backwards guitar you know like right hand you know showing someone no you know you're like <laughs> uh that's tough but there's an app there's an extension you can get for chrome See, this that. is why I love Howie, because I'll say this to him, and then he always got to an answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I swear, the, when this band shit doesn't work out, I'm going to... It's called Guitar be, Swap. And Geek Squad at Best Buy. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, no, there's a there's an extension you get for Chrome that will flip the video for you. Oh, shit. So you can perform, and then you can flip the video, and they'll see the right side. Um, if you want to get into it, let me know, because... Uh, I've been doing them recently and they've gone off really well and you just put it out there what you're offering. So, you know, you're a songwriter, you could offer songwriting lessons, mm -hmm. uh, some guitar stuff. If you like just basic stuff, I don't shred or anything and I don't know theory. You know, I just, I can show you what I, what I learned on my own and how I do things, but I offer like production lessons, like uh, pro tools, like uh, talking about songwriting, melody how to how arrange how to arrange and construct a song like things like that you know um and it's worked out really well everybody's it's funny man all these people they have like notepads and shit and they're just like taking down everything i'm saying it's they're very into it and uh wow. everybody has a good time so if you if you want to get into it uh talk to me after the after the show professor spangler yeah and i, I didn't like think i would be good at it but it was like I, it's just shit that i spit all day long anyway so it's like I might as well just let a kid ask me a question, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm open to it, especially with, you know, it's, you know, I'm married, you know, you, you're basically married. You're gay you're with, with, uh, we just had to move our wedding forever. <clears throat> oh, damn. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. It's I moving to next year. I, I remember you saying you were engaged. And, yeah. Next summer it was going to be this, this, uh, this September, but shit's too crazy. It is um, too crazy. Well, so hi, let me see. Casey says, uh, what was the best move you guys made as an artist to become successful? Hey, Casey. Actually, he's the one I said he's him and I are the one that are collabing. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> that uh that I'm sending lyrics over and I'm almost I was saying too, you know, I, I'm using this SM7B for it because I don't, you know, really have you know too much knowledge in what I should do or I mean I wasn't planning for a quarantine either. This is a great mic. Yeah. Like you picked a great mic. Did you just get it? No, I've had it for a while, but I, uh, I, I did, a, I saw it and used it on that truthful lies record hmm. and he had like a $10,000 mic. And then we tried to use it and I'm like, that doesn't sound right. And then he used the SM seven B. I'm like, let's use this. It sounds great. We did a whole record with it. So it's not, it's in my abilities to get it on the logic and get it to him. But uh, the best move I got to become successful, I got lucky. Um, it goes all the way back to Sublime Archive. That that was the thing that probably at least 50% of people know me uh, from, not even if they don't know that. Because 
the guy who ran that website, um, it was Chris. And then he had another web guy who wanted to cover my song Chilean lover. And there wasn't a lot of traffic going on through there. And they, um, I had just released my first record and I had tricky Nikki as a single and they were doing free downloads and I didn't realize at the time the sublime archive was had like 6,000 downloads a day. I had zero idea. And they put on tricky Nikki for me. And there was just like, it was just like the pier, but they just didn't have a lot of stuff going on on like, they had a front page like them and they left on, they left that on there for like six months. So the first thing you saw when you went to sublime archive was my song and gave it away. You know, everybody, giving it things away for free is so huge at the beginning because you, you get what you give. And so if you keep giving out and putting things and being on compilations and, and not asking for any money uh, in the, for a long, long time is generally the way to go. Um, and I, I mean, Tricky Nicky, is the song that a lot of people know me from. They might not know any other song, but they know that song. And it all started there. And I was just some kid, you know, like you from small town in Maryland. You have some small town in Pennsylvania outside of Philly. And that was before Spotify. That was before these things that put everybody on a kind of level playing field. Um, so my thing is get on compilation, get on I, everybody. I see people getting on playlists, which I hear is, an art in and of itself <clears throat> it's it's the way it it's is the way, way. absolutely yeah. it's but it's very fucking hard to do yeah and um people have managed i've seen like small bands like they they figure something out that i even haven't yet let me let me jump in on this um mm -hmm. since we're talking about playlists right now all you fans out there i'm looking at you <clears throat> if you want to help and i know you do uh and we appreciate it so much um create playlists of your favorite bands, right? Uh, anytime a new song comes out, like the new Ballyhoo song, Social Drinker, this Friday, you can pre-save it. Um, anytime a, a new song comes out, add that song to that playlist. Share with your friends. Um, you don't realize how much power you have. Mm -hmm. You could have, you know, if you start getting followers, things like that, it doesn't matter how many followers you have. It's, when you create play playlists, you're like just adding. You're adding to the, to the band's like pushing that algorithm for the band, for the artists that you love. And it could be a, it doesn't have to be all value songs, all Pinto songs. It could be everybody you love. It's just the matter that, you know, you're putting that on a playlist and people are streaming it, your friends or whatever, you're streaming it. It just adds to it. So anytime, a lot of times now, like the pre-save campaign we're doing right now is that you pre-save a uh, social drinker. The option is there to follow the band on Spotify, which is huge. Please follow all your favorite artists on Spotify. The more artists, the more follows an artist has, uh, the more the release radar is going to work out for them. Uh, meaning, Bally, who's got 77,000 followers on Spotify, that means on day one, that new song is going to go out to 77,000 people. And then right. in the second week, you actually get a second push with the release radar. Uh, wow. So anybody that didn't listen to it that first week, they're going to get a chance to hear it again so they push it out to those people again so you get like a second bump i just learned that recently uh the the other thing is add add the song to your playlist so uh absolutely playlisting you know and to get on the spotify curated playlist is very tough nowadays um there's so many they get so many submissions every week but you got to be smart and use that spotify artist submission tool and do it at least seven days before the release and um make sure you tag it up properly go on to Spotify and my version of chill is not their version of chill. Um, now one of the spot, one of the playlists that we're on, I think it's beach vibes is on the chill section. Spotify is more about, more about vibes than it is genre these days. And when you, when you look at it and you, you want to go study what artists that sound like you are on what playlist and what vibe they're considered. So when I put when I submitted us for a chill and wasn't necessarily maybe i mean now that i see that we're in there like we're on that beach vibes thing but when i think of chill now it's like lo-fi and like chill dance stuff and like heavy heavy verb 
yeah like real ambient things and we're not really like that but we'd also don't fit on a pop playlist you know it's like it's very weird so study spotify vibes like study all the different uh chill workout like all the different playlists you know and look and see what artists are there and use that information to tag yourself up properly and give yourself the best chance of being heard by the spotify uh curators and they'll they, they want to know where to put you you know they want they want to know where can i put this song and if they don't feel like it's going to fit in the in the vibe in the vibes that you've tagged then they i don't know what their process is they may skip over it they may just jump to the next one maybe they'll say this might be better over here you can't trust that you got to set it up the best way possible and let the song do the work you know um so absolutely streaming is the way to go yeah there's so much to learn i mean that's that's an art in of itself and you could spend a week just on that i mean i finally got into well someone had showed me just like because to get on playlists to, to submit them some are free uh what playlist push is not free you have to pay and then you know and uh i don't know uh, sound plate i heard is free but that's not easy to get songs on playlist push is the one that i kind of heard from smaller artists that are like yeah that's how i got on at least a couple things but i released my new song which i thought was pretty chill and it only got on like two and i was like yeah oh. I, I used playlist push once and um maybe it was the wrong song or, or what but we got on a few things but they were very small and i'll take whatever playlist you know we can get yeah, yeah um yeah. but the money that we paid to to push it out didn't really equal and that, that's the gamble you take so sure. i'm pretty much on a i'm not paying paying for playlists yeah vibe. i'm not doing that I again i did it the one time just because someone had advised me to try to do it and i'm like ah, oh, it's my first time let's give it a shot you have to try things yeah. you know and th you just consider things a loss okay well, i learned from that don't pay to get on playlists you have to you have to work and it's something that you have to uh you know the career takes time to build as you know the career mm -hmm. takes time to build just like many things and it's not going to happen overnight sometimes you will get lucky the right person will hear it but um it's something that you you're better off it's like when a band signs with a label you know and they give they give away half their royalties if not more the label may not do the work that you hope they're going to do next thing you know nothing happens the needle doesn't move now you're stuck for seven years or ten years giving away you know your royalties when you could take that money and put it into marketing i say i say put money into marketing as much as possible mm -hmm. don't buy a publicist <clears throat> don't pay for publicists pay for marketing that's that's yeah. my i guess i'm like a publicist is getting you in like rolling stone unless you're like top tier and to, for something like that you're paying four or five grand a month and a lot of artists don't have that you that's know crazy. and that's not even guaranteed you know you're gonna find yourself in a lot of a lot of the same uh the same publications every cycle every time as if you're using the same person uh same company it's just a waste of money you you know it's like put the money into ads buy ads on facebook and instagram youtube spend your money wisely think of good ways to market to answer casey's question for me the best thing i ever did was starting a podcast doubling down on my youtube and triple down on engaging with my audience and that's on my personal that's on the ballyhoo stuff the that is how you grow that is how you really do it you it's organic you're not putting yourself if you put if you put an ad out ads are great but you got to be smart about your ads too use yeah. the data go into your spotify for artists go in your go in your facebook your youtube see who your followers are see who's into it and target people like that you can get down on facebook and get down to like the lifestyle like how much money they spend on certain things it's, it's pretty it's creepy uh, but that's how businesses, you know, market to you. Um, but use the data and um, don't don't say don't say okay, my my new shit's out. Go buy it. Go stream it. People don't know who you are. They're not going to go stream it. You're wasting money. You need to say something else in your ads. Like say say something like. A lyric from the song or what the song means to you something very short but something that's going to catch people that's going to connect 
it's all about connection, man. And, and so whatever medium you're in, it's all about connection. If I were to put out a book right now, I don't write books. I'm not an author. I fucking hate reading. I'll try to read, you know, if I'm really interested in it. If I put out a book right now, it would do okay. You know, I would, I would sell some books, you know, because I have people that, that want to support what I do. And I've given enough value over the last couple of years, I think, to where people go, oh man, that's really cool. I did that solo record, man. I had one week of promo, official one week of promo, and it went number one on reggae for the weekend, right? That was because I have these hardcore fans that love what I'm doing and that they're willing to support. Um, and but the, but leading up to that record, to the release of that record, I was showing them how I was doing it. I was I was letting them in. I, I didn't care about secrecy. That I, I lifted the veil and I showed them how I how I produce a song. Me working on the the guitar part or me constructing the beat or or writing the lyrics, like those are the types of things that people connect with. And they don't get to see very often. I would love for Billy Joe Armstrong to take me into a studio on Zoom or something and show me how he how he writes or what he's working on. Um, and we have that same capability. And if you're constantly consistent every week, you're going live, you're talking to people, you're acknowledging them, you're over delivering with how many songs you're playing, you're giving a backstory to all the songs, like you're doing that, you really start building something out and that is how you build, but it's something that takes time. So you have to have the patience. And I know you and myself and these other bands work really hard. We have what it takes. We have the patience. Some bands quit because they shit's not popping, but they're not working hard enough. They're not yeah. doing what they need to do. And some people just don't know what to do. So, you know what I mean? So that's why I started the podcast is to get that information out. I, I'll give that shit away for free, man. It's just, you build your crowd, you build your audience, loyal people. You know, there was this whole thing about us going in, into the pop music realm when the, when the girls album came out and all that. And we tried a few things. It doesn't work, man. You gotta, the pop world is, it's by design. It is, it's pop. It's popular culture, popular music. It's here today, gone tomorrow. And if you can't deliver on the next thing, you're gone. People forget about you, but you build. That's why I think that this, this genre that we're in has is flourishing so much now because it's been 15 years of these bands just hitting the road and putting out cool music, not worrying about getting up, writing a hit and just staying true to themselves. And that's how they're building and gaining a loyal following. I don't know. I, that is my belief. I, I yeah, fuck I mean, trying to write a hit back to writing, going back to uh, the road. Like I have like, even, not even that it's been crazy as uh, like, doubled everything that i had if you talk about numbers that are important numbers spotify numbers uh fans and you know you see it go because you can't beat the the real thing you know what i mean like you can work the internet as uh, to a point you gotta if you're a, a musician you gotta get on the road you gotta do the live show even wherever you're at uh if it's if you're just in socal if you're just in your city like and you feel that you believe in your in your show then and, and say you, you got a family or you got to play your job then play three nights a week somewhere you know that are the three best places that you could play you know in an hour radius and get home you know that's you could still be very proud of that you know there's jazz musicians never leave new york and they're highly regarded and crushing so and and then they live stream too i like i said the how in the beginning I'm like, I wish I'd have listened to him earlier and absolutely true. Cause I mean, it's the only thing that would keep me going in this whole quarantine. I, I mean, I don't know what I do. I mean, I had to, I would have had to file for unemployment and uh, you know, and then you know, I probably would just be a lot down You know, it's really helped me and my uh, confidence too, to know that you could still, entertain people because that's what we like to do you know what i mean we as artists being driven we will always find a way there's you know this has been here this has always been here you know for several years but mm -hmm. this pandemic thing has just shifted everything and now everyone sees the value in it and there's some artists that still aren't getting on this and it's mm -hmm. like come on man like this is 
this is where it's at right now. You can't tour. You got to keep the shit going. And it takes a little bit of extra effort, you know, to like, you know, I, I, dude, I don't, I don't shower and I'll do a fucking live stream. I don't care. But like, it's you know and to make these quarantine videos you know to get my guys and myself even to like get motivated to set up the camera and set up the pro tools session and press record and look nice and take a shower and like perform the song and then edit it and all this stuff you know it takes hours to do that stuff um but i know the fans need it they want it i want to give it to them i also need to perform you know i know you need to perform and now you finally you finally realize like you've discovered like holy shit like this is completely possible you got your sm7b like i've seen your stuff it sounds good it looks good and uh you write great songs and people love it and um it's it's really something this is not going away when everything comes back to normal uh live streams is going to be something that happens from here on out um and it's all a matter of your imagination and how far you want to take it you know yeah, I mean, it's fun. It's too easy. It's yeah, too easy to to not just sit and you know you're at home, you know. And uh, I love I love that. You know, I love the fact that I can just go back to I go to bed after it if I if I want to. And even I've been doing these Zoom Zoom happy hours with some people, which is just and not charging too much. I saw that. And I love awesome. it. I love it. You know what? I if I'm gonna have a beer. In the day, uh, I'll sit there with a bunch of people who like my music and you can have up to 10 people. It's like a little house party and, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's a way to like break up, you know, you, you have your streaming day and you don't want to bother people, but you do want to work. You want to do a couple more days. So I, I found that really, really cool. And just start off cheap, you know, you can make a little bit of money and, Try not to uh, gouge anybody. You know, I, I don't, it isn't even really about the money. You want to have enough. Those people are going to go to your shows when you go see them in town. I, I just, I know it and I'm going to remember them. And I think there's, it creates this tighter bond. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I'm that, excited. That's a wonderful that. idea, man. We were, we were, uh, we were brainstorming a couple of weeks ago and talking about that very thing, like a Ballyhoo cocktail hour, you know? And just yeah. have fans come on and hang out with us on something like this and just chill. I haven't drank in almost a month so or over a month now. So I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I, I guess I forgot about it. But uh, I saw you post that the other day on your Instagram. I was like, damn, that's a, yeah, that's a wonderful idea. So how, how do people get a hold of you to uh, to do a little cocktail hour with with Mike Pinto? They just I just say DM me through uh, Instagram or Facebook. That's the easiest way for me instead of going through any other email channels it's really just like explain to them and and then Venmo, just Venmo the, the money and and try not to get too many, no other steps in between it, you know, that could keep you as an artist from getting the sale or whatever. You know, it's like, oh, what day do you want to do? Okay, well, you do like a half up front and you lock in the date and that's it. I mean, it's not same thing you would do when you get the gutters replaced in your on your house or any other things you need to you know getting an oil change except you drink it with mike pinto exactly <laughs> I, yeah i like i like doing that I like that's doing, wonderful man feeding the fans you know so like let, let's get that like going brendan. for sure yeah i like brendan turtle turtle wants to know please please explain the importance to artists about knowing and understanding their business oh man we could we could go into a whole this is a whole other podcast episode yeah um, I, know. I be i mean i feel like howie knows a lot more than i do honest honestly um i'm sure you know quite a bit yeah what, what is the importance of understanding how shit works i think the biggest thing is so that you don't get people yelling at people who are working with you uh you know for not doing anything i think it's it's important for you because if you're working with a company or you, you should be able to see results and you have to do it yourself. I think first, before you start delegating it to anybody else, because you know, you hear those prima donnas are like, they're not doing anything for me. And it's like, well, you know how much time it takes to do some of this 
social media and all these things outside of writing songs that it's, you know, uh, giving people, no artist should really be giving anybody shit about doing their job until they've probably done their job. Uh, for the most I'll part. agree with that. You know, there, there's a, there's a point where some artists think that because they have management and people to do things for them and handle, handle business that they just need to quit everything. <clears throat> and I'm not that type of person. Um, I'm the type where, like I said, I still micromanage, you know, and I'm trying to let go of that um, a little bit, but you do have to know what's happening with your business. It's your business, you know, and uh, you need to be involved. And I can say, you know, there's certainly some people that just are just the creative. They're just the artist and they don't know shit about business. They don't know how things work. They don't know how to drive a fucking car, you know, and they, they got to have people manage their stuff for them. Okay, fine. But most of us are capable of uh, being involved, making decisions, but don't get lazy uh, when things start popping or, you know, you end up with a management company. Um, you still need to be involved and working. Uh, it, it takes everybody, it takes a team and communication and you need to be, you know, that's how you get well oiled and things run without, without issues. Uh, understanding uh, how merch works and how, uh, you know, advancing shows and all these things that, that like a tour manager does. And, you know, a tour manager needs to understand how all this shit works. A, a tour manager needs, needs to know every facet, you know, to, to, so they know, so they're not getting fucked over, you know, by the promoter or something, or, uh, cause that happens. Promoters try to, you know, some will try to take money from you. They'll, they'll try to keep money that is actually owed to you when you, because you don't realize it's in the contract that way or something. It's, there's a lot of things you need to understand so you don't get fucked. And we've been fucked several times and, uh, it's, it's very easy for things to slip under your nose. Yeah, it's going to happen. It is going to happen at some point in time just because you can't know everything. But I mean, and I, I mean, I knew Turtle for years and there was a long time where myself, all I thought, I mean, I, I knew about, uh, you know, all social media and, and posting, but I didn't dig in deep enough. Like I'll be the first to admit it. And I wasn't knowledgeable enough. So, um, there's always more to learn. You can't just learn it all in one, one turn. And then, uh, especially with technology, it's just going to change, which is frustrating as a musician because you're like, wait a minute, I thought I knew how to do this. <laughs> but, um, and I think that that would be, I wish I could tell my younger self, listen, this, you know, you have, you have to keep up with social media. I mean, I remember, I was on the road so much that I didn't realize that how paid everything when everything went from Facebook to paid ads. Do you remember that time? Yeah. It wasn't like a press release, like, Hey, we're all switching. Uh, this is what you need to do. Like no one was telling you what to do. And I fell behind on a summer tour that I'm scratching my head. Well, what happened? You know what I mean? I didn't realize that all, you know, the whole system changed and that's going to happen, you know, with, with your programs, whether it's recording and um, Spotify will change and uh, they will, they'll add on to things and you got to keep up with it. And it's up. The thing I didn't do is I was so focused on all oh, the music and uh, let's make sure we book the shows and, and uh, get street team. I was doing kind of the old way and you know, I saw it and even not working with too many managers. I didn't know what to expect with them, you know, what they were supposed to do, what to uh, take on myself with them. Uh, so, I mean, we, there's always more to learn. Don't think that once you get a couple people to help you out, that your job is done because your job's just begun because there's more than one way to skin a cat too. You know what I mean? Like, Turtle manages bands and what may work for one of the bands that he works with does wouldn't work for me because we're two different bands and you don't know it until you go through it. So it's just a continual learning <clears throat> process. Sometimes it's, it's frustrating, but oh, you got to stay on it. 
Very true. Very true. Um, we'll take a couple more questions here. Um, let's see. What was the transition like from going to being just a person who jams and makes music to almost being forced into audio engineering to make recorded music? That's one alley question to me because I'm still not there. Um, you you got to be built first. You got to know who you are, you know, and and everybody should learn. Like I can learn basics and, and but you don't have to be an audio engineer and a musician. You know what I mean? It, do, it doesn't have to be that way. You could just find someone like Howie <laughs> who's gifted in both of those things. And you can either learn from him or he could do it for you. And sometimes paying that money, know who the pros are and uh, give him the money. I'm huge on this. I'm huge on this. This is, this is something where like self-awareness comes in, man. You got to be like, okay, I am not good at recording myself or you know, you know what I mean? Or I am not a drummer. I'm not going to sit here and try to play drums. I'm going to hire a drummer, you know, um, things like that. Like get, hiring a, a recording engineer, everybody's looking for work. You know, you might as well get a good sound and, you know, put some money in someone's pocket, you know? Um, absolutely. Uh, learning how to do this stuff is it's taken years, but it's great when you can, but if you don't have that, that capability, uh, by all means, you know, hire out, um, you know, make your, make your project the best it can be. Don't, don't try to like feed your ego and be like, I got this. You know, if you're not a fucking drummer, you know, <laughs> don't try to play drums on your record. Yeah. I remember even talking to, uh, what's his name? Kyle Smith was getting antsy because of the quarantine. Cause he had a re record that was like almost done. And then he was like, should I learn it all and, and do it? I'm like, that sounds exhausting. I'm not saying not don't learn logic, but don't force yourself to be something that you're not yet because you you know you got to be more patient because this is such a long game like i i don't know what i, I was never expecting like uh to be famous or I, I you know i really just like to write songs and play live shows and maybe to a fault i didn't think uh, you got to visualize yourself in that place like how he's got that mind like how he will not be denied uh, <laughs> he will not be denied of what he you know me me i'm like I just want to write songs. You know what I mean? He's, you could see his drive. I mean, you all are part of his podcast. Um, to find your strengths and work on them the most, everything else you can work out on the peripheral. But, you know, I'm much better to this, to myself as focusing on my songwriting uh, than to try to be an audio engineer right off the bat, or even if I tried that. Now I do wish I started doing it, but it's just not where my passion is, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, don't force yourself to do something, you know, um, there, you can always learn some basic stuff, just how to track yourself properly and export files, you know, just to kind of get it there, get it to somebody else to mix it or whatever. But, you know, uh, I would definitely say, take the steps to at least learn how to gain stage yourself. So you're not peaking or you're not too quiet or get a healthy level. And then, <clears throat> track yourself properly put you know fades in if you have to make an edit things like that like just some little details to to kind of get good at and that way when you send it to somebody it's you know you're going to get what you what you want um out of it you know uh what is uh let's see michelle wants to know what is your cash app do you have a cash app oh me yeah Oh yeah, dollar sign Mike Pinto. Dollar sign Mike Pinto. I think that's it. I should look. I don't know. Um, pretty, pretty sure that's the one I use the least for some reason, but I have it on the. Uh, they have it on Spotify now. You, you can do that. Right? I saw that. Yeah, we haven't done that. Um, we def definitely uh, use. Put all of your stuff up there. Uh, I say this to everybody: if you're if you're performing on live. Um, don't be modest. Don't think you're being greedy or weird for putting money information up there. No yeah. one has to donate, but no, there's a greater money. chance that they will. If you're delivering, as I said, over deliver, uh, actually care about your audience, take requests, acknowledge them, um, and show that you're just doing it because you love it. And any little bit helps, you know, and 
just put your put your information up there venmo paypal cash app facebook pay and if if people want to donate they will you know if they don't whatever you know you made 20 bucks maybe like but it's just you know just put it up there that's the least you can do right don't feel weird about it it's just the world we live in right now yeah i mean i for a while too i always in the beginning it's uh i mean whatever talent you have with you know the internet if you're making art or you do we have a little hobby at first you you know you get uh pulled this way and that being like well am i begging for other attention or uh money i mean i think if you really are passionate about something like and you do a little speed video of you doing it drawing a picture put it on youtube you have no idea who's going to look at it might be you might be some kid who learned something from you i mean i i find people you know i'm i'm learning piano through youtube and other little things it's like these guys have no idea that they're helping me you know get past that first hurdle and it's fun to share some things you, you can find some connections and um it's just advertising yourself and your band it's so funny because i see joe and, and brendan i cavelli joe doesn't sleep joe is like totally self-made man he's like, everywhere you guys need, yeah that guy seriously charged up on some kind of energy that i wish you could bottle it and sell it because I'd, I'd help him and uh hit him and turtle will get along really well they're good people uh yeah i mean there's yeah. so much to learn you, you never but none of us think that we figured this out all of it we just are always wondering what else do i need to learn you know i know i don't feel like an expert in anything <laughs> it, it just comes with the more you do stuff you know just like anything else the more you do it the more you practice it you get better at it um you said something earlier about you never know who's watching same thing music create content whether it's videos music i mean we as artists we should be doing both we should be creating videos creating music add to your catalog you never know who's listening who's watching um just get it out there it's it's just the important thing is to get it out and don't be so concerned with production value uh make it sound the best you can obviously when you do your lives um I say to artists, like when you do your lives, like uh, think about what's happening in the background, you know, like put put some cool stuff in the background, things that are sp sp uh, specific to you and your personality or the things you're into. Um, make it look cool, like add some rope lights or some little tiki lights or something or little, I don't know, a fucking garden gnome or something. But like <clears throat> something that like shows you put some thought into it because that's just going to help. You know, you might think, okay, whatever, but it's going to add to it. And people are going to know that, oh man, this guy cares. And he, he just, he's not just sitting there. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with whipping your phone out on the couch, you know, and just playing some songs for people. But when you, but when you do these scheduled shows, try to make it like an event, we have to try to make it as much of an event as possible, as much like a normal show. When we play these big live stream shows at this place down the, down the road, this production place, it looks like a show. It looks like we're playing on like Jimmy Fallon or something, right? Yeah. Uh, there's no one there, but we try to make it feel as much like a big rock show as possible. And that includes me going, all right, get your hands up and doing all the normal shit I would do at a show, you know, uh, as if I'm reacting with a crowd. I'm trying to get a crowd to react to me. Um, and I know there's people at home that are waving their arms and they're singing along and they're doing the things because they're, they're, they're trying to make it feel like a normal show too. You know, there's that meme I saw the other day with it's like a picture of one of those uh the guardrails at a, at a venue and it's like think about buying one of these so i can stand in front of in front of my tv for youtube performances <laughs> i've seen that i've seen that you know so i just think the more thought you put into it the more people are going to see it and be like oh that's cool if you don't put it up they may not notice it but if you do they're going to notice it you know they're going to be like oh that's really cool looking uh visually you know something has to be catching um, so there's, and there's little tricks you can do it, dude. You don't have to put a lot into it. Just something cool to make it look like you put some thought. Um, and that makes it more valuable and more like people are going to donate and want to help. Uh, let's see, let's take, uh, let's take one more question here. Um, 
Yes, me and Mike are going to do a song. We got to do a song for sure. I know. It's, it's getting to the point. Exactly. Uh, yeah, Joe says I should stand in the light box. Yeah, we we bring the light boxes to the uh, to the, to the streams for sure. I still stand on those. Um, and I'll like point, I like point at nothing. I'll point at the ground. You know. Um, let's see. It I is. Like the comedian, the one it's absolutely play. weird to play to an empty room. I. Uh, it takes me just when we start getting used to it, the show's over. Trust me. It's like two hours later. I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. And the show's over. Um, let's see. Uh, that dude, Stevie J says, how do you feel about stand up comedians opening for musicians? Okay, here we go. Here's one to go out on. Oh, are you a stand up comedian? All right. There it is. Oh, um, wink, winkety wink. <laughs> so uh, this is uh i'm not a stranger to this we we've, we've in the past i've played events where there's been like a stand-up comedian you know playing or whatever um and uh i, I think it's a cool way to, to change things up um you know because you're looking for you always look for the bands to kind of make a good package you know i'm always concerned about who's playing with us yeah. because I'm, I'm worried about how the night's going to be like you want something that's like consistent and the bands are similar and there's sort of like a there's a general vibe throwing in a, a stand-up comedian is absolutely something that you can try while you're setting up you know while you're changing changing over you know have a stand-up comedian come in there and, and do a set do a short like 15 20 minute set and uh that could be something i don't know it'd be interesting that makes me think of a good idea that is bringing back the variety shows you know that i mean in the 50s and 60s that's what they used to do it used to be more than just a a musician it used to be dance it used to it used to be c comedy and all that uh i think that would be a breath of fresh air to have in your show as long as it all aligned and you know you know you want to get yourself like a booking agent for that and and try to do it in a professional way where it's built together not just thrown on because then you you know you get left out uh of on bills sometimes especially as a comedian they, you know, they, they call it some kind of variety show. Uh, I would love to do that, make it more like a um, experience than just, you know, local, local, you know, bring something out on the road that could be kind of fresh. M made me think about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree to that. Uh, yeah, Stevie, next time we're at Ocean City, man, maybe we can try to make something happen. Um, you yeah, should hook up with... Uh, yeah, between, the, you know, you need that half hour between a comedian and a... Uh, uh, you know, a rock band, you know, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to dive right into it. But. To talk to Magellan about going on the, uh, on the, uh, ocean 98 show, uh, Stevie. Comedy is hard online too, though. You ever see, you see some of the comedians without having the crowd, they need the crowd more than we do. Oh yeah, man. I can't even imagine. I, I've always had this cause I love stand up comedy and like, I've always thought there was a, a parallel between what we do and what they do. Um, but, I feel like they have it harder than we do, you know, and we have it hard, Definitely. but them being alone and trying to travel on the road by themselves, uh, put themselves out there in front of people. And the whole idea of going to a comedy show is that you're supposed to make people laugh. You're supposed to be funny. Right. And if you're not funny and you're not doing the thing that they came to see you do, it's the, it's immediate response it's immediate reaction and you feel it i can't imagine being a stand-up comedian oh my god and they call it the ego's last stand or oh man oh stevie's it. already on the ocean 98 my bad <laughs> right on he's way ahead of me um, <laughs> that's great well, maybe you could get us on ocean yeah why don't you bring us on ocean <laughs> uh, um so mike pinto music on instagram uh Go look for his music everywhere, Spotify, Apple Music. You're you're on all the platforms, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, you know, MikePintaMusic.com, man. It's all all there. It's all there. Um, please give him a follow and uh, go save him in your library on Spotify, Apple Music. Go follow him on uh, on Spotify as well, please. Um, and uh, I've been doing YouTube. I've been doing live streams every Saturday uh 7 p.m eastern for pacific and i have a youtube mike pinto music so that's there um yeah dude howie thanks so much for always trying to help that's another thing too uh you're always trying to help out musicians and i say it to you before but it's real and 
that's good karma. You build, you've built up a lot of good karma and it's, it, it's been great to see it really pop for you in the last couple of years. Like the way it should be, you know, we know it should be, you know, so. I, I appreciate it, man. I look, I, I am a, I'm an open book. I don't withhold information. I'm, I'm down to, that's why I'm doing this. I, you know, we, we, this podcast, when I bring guests on, we bullshit a lot. We talk about dumb shit and I love that. I think it's great entertainment, but there is some value to everything that we're saying. You know, when we talk about a story about how we got fucked over by a promoter or we slept on a floor, someone's going to learn something from that. Like, oh, well, that was hilarious, but I'm never going to do that. You know, I'm never going to, I'm not going to make that mistake. And I feel like that's the value that comes out of this kind of stuff, these conversations that we have. So what age, what age do you stop sleeping on the floor? We should, <laughs> what is it? 20, 28. Nah, for me, it was like 32. I know. I'm, I'm not saying that I didn't sleep on a floor past that. I'm just saying when should people stop? <laughs> oh, when you should, when you should stop, it's probably 26, 27, 28. Yeah. Uh, cause yeah. I definitely, even thinking about that age right now, I'm like, God, uh, you know, sleeping on weird places. Um, but definitely when you get in your thirties, you start feeling like a piece of shit even more mm -hmm. when it comes to that stuff. And you're just like, I, I, it's not you. It's definitely me. Like mm -hmm. no offense, but I, I just can't do this. I can't do it. It well, if you was a mansion, if it was like a mansion, would you stay at the house? Yeah, there's there, there are, I think, three Ew. houses that we stay in on the road still. Still. Because we trust the people. They're cool. They're not crazy. I know they're big fans, but they don't fangirl. There's no, there's no weird shit going on. And they have a nice place. And they, they feed us. They take care of us. We do laundry. It's, it's a nice place to set up, to post. But most of the time you don't you just don't know what you're gonna get and we don't take that chance <laughs> yeah yeah uh there was a quick question i needed to answer for someone where was it uh where was it oh the spotify thing yeah, yeah yeah so hey spotify playlist when you download the playlist offline in the car yes the counts still apply okay what happens is if you're if you're streaming offline and the songs are downloaded when you go when the next time you connect to the internet those that th that tally goes to Spotify and we get the credit for the spins so yes thank you for asking that uh, as long as you listen to any song for at least 30 seconds um, it gets counted as a stream and when you listen offline it gets counted as a stream when you get back online so absolutely streaming I can't push it any harder I'll say this every episode. Please stream your artist. No, it is not great pay at first. The money sucks. They pay really badly. Hopefully that will change in the next couple of years. But the more you stream, the the more it starts to add up and bands will start to see a difference. I promise. So if you want to help the band, the best thing you can do is stream them all day, all night, YouTube, Spotify, whatever you watch on, wherever you listen on. And buy merch. And, and buy merch. And buy merch. And, and, you know, it's up to the bands to make cool merch that, that you guys want to wear. So we're always trying to stay ahead of that as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mike Pinto, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been uh, Tales from the Green Room, episode number 118. Please, wow. everybody, give him a follow uh, on all his platforms, his music and all that. Um, it's great to talk to you again, man. You too. I know. We got to make a habit of it. We do. And I, I'm, I'm down to, to do some tunes, man. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Be good. It's time. Awesome, man. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please uh, follow if you're on YouTube right now. Please subscribe and like the video. Um, you know, give some likes and hit that notification bell so you don't want to go live. If you're on Facebook, please share the share the video around right now if you would. Um, that's all I ask, man. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Peace.